Hi, welcome back to this deep dive series and this is Supercar Garage number four. Now, if you haven't seen the full Chill Out Musical Garage Tour, I strongly advise you watch that one first before this. It's linked down below. It's the same format as before where we're going to look at each car in a little bit more detail, a bit about how it drives, perhaps where the crew colour came from, certainly a photograph of the car that inspired my particular build. This week's collection is mainly American and French supercars, but there's also a little scattering at the end from right round the world. Let's get on with it. Starting with the Vapid FMJ, based strongly on the 2017 Ford GT, I painted mine to look like the car they showed originally, right back in fact in 2015, which is on the bottom left. You see the crew colour on the bottom right. It's come out looking really nice or at least the colour has. The car has significant differences all around the front splitter area, the headlights and other areas. And I think when I first saw the car on game, I thought, what the heck is that? What car is it based on? You know, it's like that, which I think makes it not a must have at all. And that's probably handy because the car is now discontinued by Rockstar. I don't want to make a big deal of all the cars they've pulled. I've already done a video on that. But from this point going forward, I will simply put that discontinued stamp on the top right so that you know that if you want this car, you're going to have to wait for what Bruffy calls the reverse drip feed. Wait till it pops up in Simeon's or whatever and grab it on that particular week. I don't think you do need to grab this one though. It's very much a collector's only car. I do quite enjoy the way that it drives, but honestly, don't worry about it if you don't have it. Moving on to a car that you can still buy, although it's discontinued, because I saw it in, I think, was it the Simeon showroom this week? So I would say grab it while you can. It doesn't cost much money. It's the Vapid Bullet, of course. You see them on the street a lot. Now, I've made mine to be based on Hefner's twin turbo version of the Ford GT. Hefner take these things to a thousand horsepower. And there's just enough customization in the game to actually sort of replicate that car. It looks good in the garage, and you know, it drives okay as well. Yes, it's slow, pretty much the slowest in the game, but the way it handles, the sound, and the overall experience is perfectly pleasant. So go and grab one, pop it in your collection, make it one of the Hefner cars. Moving then from a cheap but rather pleasant car to an expensive and not quite so pleasant car, the Taipan, the Hennessy Venom F5, which of course in real life is a phenomenal uh, hypercar more than supercar. But in the game, it's got these advanced handling flags and I don't particularly feel it affects it too much over bumps. But what I do notice is the engine constantly revving, it will sort of short shift and then just catch on the revs and it just sounds horrible. So horrible, in fact, you have to hear it. And all I'm doing here is driving flat out down the street. I've not lifted my foot, or my finger in this case, and uh, I just don't like that. Now even if you play with your Spotify on and hardly hear the engine noise, it's still not massively quick, but it does handle okay. So not top in the driving department, but it does look pretty good and I think this colour, which is easy to make, really suits the car and it came straight from the Hennessy website. Next we have the Overflod Zeno. Now Overflod, of course, is a brand in the game that has not only Koenigsegg but a number of Scandinavian cars and in this case even an American hypercar under the brand. Based on the SSC Tuatara and I've built mine to look like the Aggressor, the most track focused aerodynamic of them. You can see my paint colour on the bottom right and the dark steel pearl is simply because if you put the red pearl on which looks so good, then the roof picks up the pearl and then it looks stupid so that's the decision there. I really like driving this car and I've made a full review so I'm not going to talk here about the driving. I will urge you simply to click on that review after this is over. The link is down at the bottom for that. But yeah I think this is a great car and I think it's raised up to a little bit more than just a collector's car even if it's not a must-have. Back across the Atlantic now to France where we have the Trafade Nero based strongly on the Bugatti Chiron. Mine is based on this black and gold Chiron SS and the colours are fairly easy to achieve in game. Gold at the front, black at the back. 
Again, like the previous car, you have to have a neutral pearl to avoid messing up the black at the rear of the car. My only issues with the Rockstar styling of this car are the grille and the curve for the rear air inlet which they have changed dramatically, but I think it's still possible to tell what the car is. It drives really, really well. It's a very, very neutral handling car, lots of grip, lots of go, and lots of very cultured noise that you could actually believe is coming from the W16 engine. And certainly, this is a car I would recommend for your supercar collection, unreservedly. If you're enjoying this or getting any value out of it, I would really appreciate you clicking that like button right now before you forget. Thank you so much. Moving on. Staying with the theme of Bugattis, we move next to the Adder, and I'm sure so many people have an Adder because it used to be the supercar back in the day. Now, in some ways, it still is a really good car to have. I mean, we don't have the active rear spoiler or some of the other little things that I think Rockstar would have put on the design, but it's still actually pretty recognisable, and it drives really, really nicely. If you like driving the Nero, you will like driving the Adder. I was looking to brighten up this garage a bit and uh, I was going through various images and this purple and white one just jumped out of the page at me. I thought that is excessively bright. That'll work really well. So I made up a crew colour that replicates this purple and out in the sun looks fantastic. Obviously I've had to have the white in different places, that's just the way the car works in the game. Anyway, highly recommended budget supercar, time to move on. If you watched the garage tour and said, what's that stupid livery on that car? Well, haha, -ha, it's a real livery. The Spiker Aileron, strange name for a car, the Visa Neo in-game. The last few, they made an LM85 Special Edition and there were quite a few different ones and one was black with this red livery and that's what I've done here. The livery took, of course, a very strong inspiration from one of the Spiker race cars. Now in game the car is somewhat lively and it can be a little bit loose. It's four wheel drive, it's quick. I would describe it as a less bouncy or springy Itali GTO. Overall it's pretty nice to drive. I guess it's a bit more of a collector's car and of course now it is on the reverse drip feed. So if you want one, just keep a look out for it coming back. I don't think however it's a must have. The next car is based on a car that it's not based much on. The Pegasi Reaper is based very loosely on the Lycan Hypersport, an ultra expensive car of which they only made seven. There's also some Huracan mixed in there and just some weird things that Rockstar thought up. I don't think it's a good looking car in the game at all. I never bought one. Years and years ago I accidentally won this one on the wheel, so obviously I kept it, it's quite an expensive car. The last year I won another one on the wheel and that's why last year when I had a big Fast and Furious selection I made of course the tower jump car and that car has now actually been got rid of, I just have the one. I realise the car that I've put up as a photo is actually a die cast model, I'm not that old and senile you know, but the reason I've done that is it's quite hard determining what colours these came in and finding nice photos of them. I'm pretty sure from what I've found out there was a nice dark blue one. Sometimes I think it was satin, sometimes not. More details in my crew colours video, but essentially if you go for matte black, then put the crew colour on the car, come out of the game, come back in, you will have the satin version. That's how it was made. As far as driving this car, it's nice sounding and it is nice driving. It will drift and it is controllable. So it's not a looker, but it is a driver. I think it's very much a collector's car if you can take the looks. Moving now to the Devest 8 or the Devel 16. This seems to have been something that's been hanging around for ages with one or two very fast cars but nothing really ever being sold to customers or fully completed. Hopefully one day it will be. 99% of my garage is changed from last year. This is part of the 1% that didn't because there's so few other cars around to really base my build on. It's a fun car to drive, it's fast, it's playful. It makes quite a nice racy noise, but if you want to know more, I have done a complete review on this car, and I highly urge you to watch that. Moving lastly to a car that is no joke, the Jester. Oh god, that was really bad, wasn't it? That really was no joke, sorry. 
The Jester is of course based strongly on the Honda NSX and it's a pretty good looking car I have to say. There's also a race version that you can make into some form of like GT3 type race car. I had that race version last year so I sold it up and bought this one for this year. It's a nice car to drive, it handles really well, it has rear biased four wheel drive, in fact for some considerable time I didn't even know it was four wheel drive. It's got a quite a weird low engine note, you think it was trying to be more Bugatti than it was Honda. But even so it is great, of course again it is one you'll have to look for on the reverse drip feed when it pops up. But as a budget supercar that's pleasant to drive and pop in your garage, I do recommend it. But there is no way this is a must have car. Now Japan would have been unrepresented in my pure supercar garages had I not put this in there and for me that was one important reason to pop it in. That completes deep dive number four, that was of course the fourth pure supercar garage and the last garage I have that is totally supercars. I have a number of other ones but they're scattered into different collections. We'll start next week with one of those different collections which is the EV section, I called it Saving the Planet with Style. I think you'll enjoy that it's a very colorful if very quiet selection of cars that will of course be coming up next sunday i'd love to know what you think of this collection uh, please let me know down below but also if you've got a car that's here but you've done it completely differently and you think i could do it better again please tell me i'd love to hear that i know i've asked for a like once but i'll ask again please can you hit the button and if you like real cars in gta well of course please do subscribe if you're not already I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching.